Hi everybody, welcome to today's live video. I think it's kind of fun just spending time together every week. This is actually my favorite is doing just Facebook lives and that is where I first got my start and the place where I feel most comfortable. So um, if you are new around here, my name is Jamie. I have seven kids and quintuplets and I am just going to dive right on in. Um, so today I volunteered in the classroom with the kids and I volunteer in the classroom three days a week and oh I should probably say hi to everybody first I just have started talking Janet it's good to see you I'm so glad you guys are here um we have people hopping on right now Diane it's good to see you thank you for being here um but just diving right in so I volunteer in the classroom three days a week with um the girls and then I always go and visit the boys um, after I volunteer and today was a really fun day with the kids. So each week the teacher just assigns me um, a station to work at and help the kids with like reading letters, numbers, computers, whatever it is. I just do whatever she tells me to do. Hi everybody, Diane. Oh, you, I've already said hi to you, Patty. How are you? Come on. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, so anyway, today was really fun because the teacher assigned me to do a scavenger hunt with the kids. And so they had cards set up all over the room and the kids had to go and find the corresponding number to the card and spell the word of the picture. So like, for instance, there's like cat or bat and the child had to um, write the letters. But what I was really impressed with was this little girl who's brand new to the class that is bilingual. Um, or is learning to be bilingual. So she came only speaking Spanish, very little English. And I am amazed just in the few amount of weeks that she's been attending school in kindergarten, like how quickly that child is picking up language and just the excitement in her eyes when she makes that connection. And she's saying it to me in both Spanish and English. And she's just like so happy. Anyway, I just, we had a really great day in the classroom and it was just fun to see those kindergartners get so excited and turn it into a game that they knew how to spell and recognize sounds and letters. And anyway, I just, I'm amazed at children and how bright they are. So, um, anyway, um, that was really fun today and the girls are doing good. They were really happy today and the little boys were really cute. Logan was working on the computer when I walked in and he is really learning to sound out letters and sounds. So even like when we're driving, he'll be um, sounding out things and it's just so fun to see them make that connection. And Logan also loves counting so he could count probably up to like 500 if he really tried. So. Anyway, um, it's good to see more people hopping on. Prudence, Sarah, nice to have you guys here. Um, so I'm just going to jump in. You guys can say where you're from. I always love seeing where everybody is living because our viewership isn't just U.S. based. We have so many people from the U.K., from Australia, from Canada, um, the Philippines. Yes, we do have people from the U.S., but people all over the world. I think Norwegians, Switzerland. Germany, just good people everywhere. It's so fun to see where you guys are all from. Um, so one of the questions I posted was on Instagram. I don't know, I don't know if you guys know if you're watching this on Facebook. I also have Instagram too, and I do tend to post a little bit more over there of pictures of the kids. So if you haven't started following me on Instagram, I would love for you guys to follow me there. It's Jamie dot Scott. Um, you can also, I would love it if you guys would subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Jamie Scott with a dash mark at the end. Um, I would love for you guys to follow me over there too. But this was a question that somebody asked over on my Instagram story today. Would you ever consider teaching ballet again? So I don't know if you guys knew that, but back in the day, I have been a dance teacher since I was 13. I dance was so much a part of my life. And that um, was something that I taught independently out of a dance studio in my basement since I was younger. And then I taught as a young adult. Um, so I taught ballet, lyrical, jazz, preparation for drill team, um, musical theater. And when I was married to Skylar's newlyweds, that was a job that we had together in the beginning. And it was really fun. Um, so would I ever con consider teaching ballet again? I think I would love to, but honestly, it would be really hard because I think my kids would listen better having a different dance instructor. Um, but I do love teaching dance. Three to five age ages is my absolute favorite because kids are so honest and so unfiltered. Um, 
But if I were given the opportunity again, I think I would, but it definitely would need to be worth my while, if that makes sense financially, because I'd have to get a sitter for childcare to watch kids if I were to teach or they would need to be in the class and it just gets a little bit tricky. So I thought that was a good question. Um, and the last time I taught dance was um, before the quintuplets, like a year or two before the quintuplets. So it's been a while since I've taught dance and I am rusty because as you guys know, dance is movement and motion and things have changed in the last 20, even 10 years in the dance world. So I would be a little bit rusty, but I do love teaching little kids. So um, there's that question. Are all the kids in the same place? I think what they meant like was kindergarten. This person asked that. So if you have questions, you guys can you can leave them too as we get in here and I can answer some more. So I think most of you guys know this, but I had the quintuplets split up into two different classes. So I, Skylar and I, their dad, co-parenting question, we chose two different classrooms for the kids. So this year, all the boys are in one class. Well, not all, the two boys. And then the three girls are in one class. And I did parent teacher conferences yesterday and was counseling with the teacher. And ultimately this is gonna be a decision Scott and I will have to make as parents of the kids. But the teachers were asking, what would I like to do um, next year? And they're kind of starting to look at that now so that not one teacher is overwhelmed with kids who have different learning needs, developmental needs, special needs, twins, multiples, you know, at our school now it's quintuplets. So my thought process as of today, and dad and I will ultimately decide what we wanna do here, but I'm thinking it would be best to split up the boys because those two take twinning to a next level sometimes. And sometimes they can just be, just add each other a little bit too much in the class. And so I think it would be good for the boys to be split up and it would really force them to be more independent. Now, next year they are gonna have four different um, classrooms for first grade, but honestly, I don't want to have to meet with four different teachers. That's just too much. Cause sometimes like brainstorming, like problems and things, you have to bounce ideas off of each other or the other teacher. And I don't wanna have to do that with four teachers and meet with four teachers. So the girls, as far as splitting the girls up, I think that could be good. Cause as you guys know, Violet and Lily are best friends. Daisy can kind of go either way. She's just a very independent, introverted, quiet child who's super reserved. So I almost think pairing up like two girls and a boy in a class and then a boy and a girl in the other class would be ideal because it would force the kids to, to make friends outside of each other. And it would just create a different dynamic in the classroom that I think would be best for the whole classroom and the teacher. So anyway, kids are doing really well counseling with the teachers. I'm amazed the whole nature versus nurture having quintuplets and even like birth order. It just fascinates me because each of these kids I'd say have had the same environment, the same exposure to most experiences, but yet they're so very different. And if anybody has multiples, I would love to see in the comments below if you've experienced that too, like they're given the same amount of milk, the same amount of food, the same options, and they just come with their own personality, their own preferences, you guys know Violet. I know a lot of people love Violet on this channel. She is just one of a kind and spunky and she just came that way. So anyway, um, those are kind of how parent-teacher conferences went, the questions that the teachers are asking me. Um, so let me see if I can take a minute and read some of the questions um, that are coming in before I answer a few more questions. This is honestly my favorite way to share with you guys and spend time with you guys. Um, hi, Gail from South Africa. It's good to see so many great people on here. Um, so if you guys have questions, I'm just looking for questions right now that I can answer. Sometimes the comments come in so quickly, it's hard to read everything. And so I have to go back and read it. And then sometimes I answer it the next time I do one of these live videos. Um, but I'll just jump into my third question that somebody asked. And I thought this was a really good one. I have never been asked this question before. Oh, here's a question. How many twins do you have in the quince? Oh, great question. So what you're asking is, are they identical? Are they fraternal? So all five of the quintuplets are fraternal. So nobody looks the same. I know on videos, the boys look a lot alike, 
but nobody's identical. And I know some people have thought like Lily and Daisy look a lot alike, but since Lily chopped her hair off, like it's easier to see differences. So yes, everybody is um, uniquely different. And I honestly didn't know from doing intrauterine insemination back in the day when they were looking at follicles and eggs and like the shells once like the eggs took, if that makes sense to anybody out there. Um, we only saw three in the ultrasound. And so I thought there could potentially um, be identicals. And I didn't know until they were born what we were going to get. Um, but everybody had their own sacs and placenta. And so that was like really nice to not have to stress about that because that can be an issue with multiples. And so it was nice that everybody was separate. But yeah, I didn't know until they were born if any were gonna look identical or not. Um, Elizabeth just asked, what is Shaden's major in college? Right now he's getting his generals in and he said he wants to be a, oh, I'm so tired. He wants to study, it's not, he wants to do social work. That's what he said. And I think that's really cool. And that was one thing I was exploring at that age too. So it's kind of fun to see as he's taking these courses, what his interests are, what he's passionate about, what he's enjoying. And he still, Maybe this is TMI, but he still hopes to have Tatum in his life in the future. That's his girlfriend. She's still in high school down here. And she wants to study some similar things, but I think they've been talking about going to different colleges this next year because they have different programs that each of them are interested in. So we'll have to see. But for now, he's studying, wanting to become a social worker. Um, okay, this was the question. How many sets of quintuplets have you met in person? I thought this was a really good question. So most of you guys might not know this, but on Facebook, there is a group of us worldwide that have quintuplets. And usually when you like announce on social media that you're expecting quintuplets, like everybody just finds each other. So as of like a few months ago, I think there was like 155 of us. And that's probably couples of like husband and wife teams. So maybe there's less than that of quintuplet families, if that makes sense. So to go back to the question, I have met three sets of families that have quintuplets. I have met the Wilkinson quintuplets that are from Texas. I have met, um, oh, what's their names? They were from Wyoming. I met another set of quintuplets um, for living that survived the quintuplets birth, but they're still quintuplets. Um, and then third, who's the third? Oh, and then the family from Idaho, the Kempels have quintuplets and their family dynamic is a little bit similar to ours because they had two older, the Kempels had two older girls before they added quintuplets to their family. And they have, I think, two girls, three boys in the quintuplets, but some similarities. And we had quintuplets, the Kempels and I, like a month and a half apart. So I just chatted with her She's recovering right now, actually, from her from her surgery, from having quintuplets. But anyway, meeting those people is like meeting kindred spirit friends. If any of you guys grew up watching Anne of Green Gables, it's just like that. Like you just catch up where you left off. Oh, and the frills. Yes. How could I forget the frills? Yes. So I have met four sets of quintuplets. You guys, thank you. I totally forgot the frills. They're like the newest set of quintuplets in the world. The frills are darling. If you guys aren't following the frills, you should follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. They're darling. They're funny. And I love their banter back and forth as husband and wife team. And they are just so excited to be parents. It, it was a long time coming for them to welcome children into their family. So go and support them, show them some love from our family. Um, and then, okay, another question. Do you write the kids initials on their clothes to keep track of whose clothes belong to, to who? My answer is no, because up until this point, the kids have been pretty much the same size. But as of the last week, that is all changing. So Daisy is having a huge growth spurt, like out of nowhere right now. And so like the kids are turning six, but I almost want to start buying Daisy because she likes sensory friendly clothes, like size seven. So it's just like bigger and because for me for our family right now money's really tight financially and so if i can size up and clothes can last can last us like another year or two that would be ideal to stretch our dollar um somebody asked what about the buzzfees the buzzfees do have quintuplets they're probably the most famous right now just because of the tlc show 
um, out doddered. Um, I have been in contact with them. They give really great advice and they're really down to earth, like God fearing people from the South. I adore that family and I think the world of them, but I've never met them in person. I know they were in St. George, Utah a while ago filming one of the segments when they were hiking Angel's Landing. Um, for their TLC show. And then I think they were filming just on their own personal channel. So I didn't know that they were in town. And I honestly, I'm actually not on social media ton, except for like to share with you guys and then to hop off. And um, Kyle, the editor usually helps with posting videos and stuff for me. So um, I've never met the Buzzfeeds. Will our pass ever cross? They might, but honestly, the Buzzfeeds are just kind of a one of a kind family because they are so well known on social media and they have so many people that reach out and that want to meet them in person. But I just greatly respect these families that do what they do in providing for their family and teaching good morals and values. And I just think the Buzzfeeds are amazing. So anyway, um, yeah, so I've never met the Buzzfeeds. Um, let's take some more questions. I know I have a list of a few things. So if you guys have questions, you can keep them coming in and I'll take a minute to pause um live love from meridian idaho i didn't get to see the rest of it i do love idaho right now we'll say that um i'm a big fan of idaho um i loved anne of green gables that was my most loved and watched movie i think as a young 11 year old girl growing up like it was great um how did your first date go i only shared a snippet on the vlog but it did go really well. We'll just say that. We'll just leave that there. It did go really well. Um, let's see. Beverly, welcome. What part of Idaho is your friend from? He's from Rexburg, but he just bought a house in Idaho Falls. So um, I hope that answers your question. Listening from Australia. Do the kids have any learning difficulties? Great, great question. And this is something that those of us with hired or multiples know that it comes with part of the package if we accept having you know and surviving the pregnancy and all of that um learning difficulties i wouldn't say learning difficulties we live in idaho we do love idaho yes we do um we do okay i'm a little tired tonight or today today it's daytime um what was i saying learning difficulties so some of the kids have adhd or an OCD combination. And so sometimes like Lincoln has ADHD, although he's not like officially diagnosed cause you have to be six years old. Um, but so for him, it just takes longer to learn like a new concept because Lincoln has a brilliant mind. He's a lot like his dad, Skylar, but it's almost like a whiteboard that just, Skylar once explained this to me. Like, it's like you have all of these things written on the on the whiteboard, but it's never erased. It's just constantly there and you're constantly thinking about new ideas and things. And so for Lincoln, he really has to focus really hard um, to learn new things. But as far as like learning difficulties or special needs in that way, no, none of my children, none of my children do. I do have two that have sensory processing disorder. And that's something that they'll probably outgrow in time as they learn to navigate it. And so how that looks is Daisy and Logan at times will just get sensory overload and feel overwhelmed. And so what they go to therapy for on occasion is just to help with regulating that and learning how to take breaks. But Daisy's actually not needed much therapy because she just naturally is good at understanding and knowing herself well enough of when to take breaks and when to engage and knowing when she feels overstimulated and she's able to express it. And so that's really nice where Logan tends to need a little bit more help because he really gets frustrated sometimes when he feels overwhelmed. Um, but as far as learning difficulties, no, we don't have that. Um, is Skylar on a different channel? Yes. So if you guys have just started rewatching all of these, he does have his own channel. I'm not sure what it's called, but he does have his own Facebook. He still is on YouTube under five to love. So you can find him there if you want to watch. And he's still on five to love Instagram as of now. And he has TikTok, but I don't know what the name of his is. So, um, anyway, I'm seeing... I'm seeing more things come in. I'll answer another question. Do you think Shaden, Janet asked, do you think Shaden will serve a mission? So those of you that are in the LDS religion or faith, several people have asked this question 
And um, I don't know that Shaden will, yes or no, either way. Um, so within the LDS faith, and I know it can be common in Christian faiths across the board, is people will donate a portion of their time to do service or humanitarian work or preaching and sharing of their faith. Like I know, um, <clears throat> I know there's groups of religions in the South where this is really important and taught in the home and sometimes expected. And in the Mormon faith, young men, if they choose to, can serve a mission, a proselyting mission, where they share the gospel of Jesus Christ for two years. Um, I think, if you guys are LDS, you can comment, I'm tired. They changed the age, it used to be 19. I don't know if it's 18 now, I can't remember. You can put it in the comments, I can't remember. But you have the opportunity to serve a mission earlier than it used to be, and so, I don't know, right now, Shaden is just focused on school and it's not something I wanna pressure him to do or put that expectation on should or shouldn't. I just wanna allow him the space to choose. And it's also not like mandatory and it's also not mandatory at a younger age. Like he can always go later. Oh, somebody said it's 18. Thank you. So 18, yes, boys at 18 and girls at 19. Yes, it used to be girls were 21 and then they, the church organization, um, just moved it down because the kids seemed to be more mature and could go. So anyway, thanks for the clarification from so many people answering that because I couldn't, I couldn't remember that. Okay, if there's more questions, I'll take questions right now and take a break of some of the ones that I was um, reading off of my paper. So if you guys have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer what I can. Um, I know I've been posting kind of some interesting stuff that I've I really don't share too much about my personal life because most of my family is so much about my family and my kids, but I think it's important to understand that we as mothers are also human beings too and um, people. Is Shaden still practicing? Um, do you mean like, is he still doing soccer? The answer is yes, but I think they're off for the season. And because it, when Shaden like got up, there it was like negative 17 degrees the other day. Um, favorite brand for sensory clothing. Yes, can we talk about this? I wish back in the 80s, they had sensory friendly clothing because I really struggled with a child with things like tags. Um, I know Target has come out with a lot of tag free options, which I love um, because like for me as a child, it was almost like if I could explain it like the princess and the pea, like if I had a tag, I could feel all the stitching if it was like embossed with anything, like I just, I couldn't think straight and I just was like so uncomfortable and I, I didn't like tight pants, I didn't like wearing socks and I didn't like wearing panties as a little kid because it was just itchy. And so nowadays it seems like there are so many, yeah, Cat and Jack clothes, um, Kristen just said, they make a lot of things without tags, especially underwear. And for me as a child, that was really frustrating um, because the material wasn't as soft. Um, I think Old Navy has come out with a lot of great options as well that are sensory friendly clothing. And this is something that my kid's dad, Skylar, some of you have given me grief because I don't always mention his name or I call him their dad or co-parent or former husband. I think there's many names you can say and to me they're all respectful. And I, I'm just gonna say I will pick what I choose to say because I know him. So anyway. But there's many different options out there and it's really nice, like the kid's dad, Skylar, he struggled with sensory friendly stuff too, um, which was more of an ADHD thing. Shaden, he may have ADHD too. And so he doesn't like tight clothes. He likes very like stretchy sporty wear types of clothes. Um, but now that he's getting older, he just understands like, okay, this material is softer than this and I feel comfortable. Landon's the same way. Logan is the same way. Daisy is the same way. And then Vivi, Lily, and Lincoln don't care. So they're a little more normal, I guess. But I'm that way too. Um, any more questions? That was great. Sensory questions. Like it's it's a good topic people don't talk about, but a lot of people get sensory overload beginning with their children. What is your favorite book? Okay, I have it right here. I got this one for Christmas and I want to start reading this. All the Light We Cannot See. This is going to be backwards. Um, it is written by Anthony Do Dewar, Dower? I don't know. Um, that's the guy on the back. So I came across this movie, I think it was on Netflix, and I think there were several episodes, and I was so amazed by how much depth 
this story has. Um, so I haven't actually read the book, but I hear it's amazing and there's a lot more detail, but watching the movie was amazing. And they actually cast is the main character, a girl in real life who's actually blind. And they cast the little girl version playing the same character this gorgeous, just chubby faced little child who's blind as well. So if you haven't seen it on Netflix, all the light we cannot see, it's really good. It did have some swear words, some F words, and I'm super sensitive to things like that. So just know if you're going to watch that, I'm assuming it's in the book too. I don't know if you guys have read the book. So things like that are sensitive to me, but it was one where as a whole, I was like, this is worth my time to watch. Um, and I would love for Lannon to see it, but there is a sensitivity because of the swearing. So maybe when he's just slightly older, but it had such a great message and the character of the main girl was just fantastic. So definitely watch that movie if you're looking for a good thing to watch. Um, let's see. Next question. Danae says, what part of Ido is your friend from? Oh, I, I already answered that one. Sherry asked, do you have a job? How do you make a living? I think this is a really great question. So I didn't know this until I got into the world of social media, but I make my living from views on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube and sponsors. And I've not had very many sponsors in the last few months. Usually I have more, but right now we don't. So I make my money off of views and sharing a portion of my life with all of you. And at first, when I first started doing all of this, I was very hesitant to film my children, to share anything in regards to my children because I'm just super protective when it comes to that. And it kind of weirded me out at first. But honestly, I think when you have hired or multiples, you have to get a little bit creative in ways that you can provide for your family and still spend as much time in the home as you can with your family. And I've seen this happen with a lot of families. They just find creative ways to generate income for their family. And I feel that like what we've done as co-parents, as parents of these kids, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I think it's been very like respectful, especially in regards to like the older boys excuse me, when they have those moments where they're like, you know, I just, I really don't feel like being on camera today and we respect that as parents. But with the little kids, I think it's been so much a part of their lives where they get excited because it's documenting what they're proud of in their play and these moments so that we can go back and be like, hey, do you wanna see what it was like when you were a baby? Do you wanna see the first time you smile? Do you wanna see what your face did when little grandma walked in the door and she looked like an angel? Like it's really fun for the kids to go back and see their life documented. And so looking back, I'm grateful we did all of this. It wasn't something I wanted originally and it was something that was honestly really scary. Like I don't think it gets more real, raw and vulnerable than being pregnant with hired or multiples, not knowing what the outcome's gonna be with such a high risk um, pregnancy. Somebody just asked, how's little grandma doing? She's good. Um, today, she on Wednesdays, she usually hangs out with my sister, Katie and then Kate's kids, and then sometimes Landon. And we adore little grandma. She is such a gift. And if you guys are unfamiliar with who she is, you can go back and watch old videos. Some of my favorite videos and vlogs we've ever done are the ones with little grandma in them because she really is what you see on film. She's just genuine and kind and sincere. And if those of you know her in real life or knew her, from back in the day when she lived in Phoenix, Arizona. She's exactly what you see. She's just the most giving person I've ever met in my entire life. Um, new guy, same faith. Great question. Um, okay, somebody else actually asked that question. Your faith is very important to you. Is your new friend a member of your same faith? The answer to that question is yes. He um, is very active in his faith and we're both members of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints some people used to call it mormon some people call it lds meaning latter-day saint um is the name of the church um he's one that attends the temple every single week and that's super important to him and we do talk about faith and religion and gospel principles what do you think about this well what do you think about that and so it's nice to um, share that same belief system. Um, and to me, one day I would love to be married in the temple to someone I really love um, 
because Skylar and I were married in the temple, but we're not married anymore. And so to me, it's important in choosing to date, choosing to date someone that has the same faith of me, because it just creates a little bit more common ground, I think. Um, but I do have friends in the Mormon faith that have married someone like one of my good friends married someone who's Jewish. And so it's actually really great because even like church lessons, sometimes she'll teach and she's able to bring in this whole other like realm of knowledge and understanding <coughs> from the Jewish faith and what Mormonism and the Jewish faith have in common. So it's really cool. And I actually really appreciate that. And like their kids celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. And anyway, it's beautiful. So, but for me, I would prefer somebody of my own faith, especially when it comes to dating. Cause it just, for me, I think it would be a little more simplistic just because my faith is so important to me. So, um, anyway, I know we've got some more comments coming in. I think I had how are your hands? That was another question. So I did like six days worth of lotion. I did bring this again. So if anybody else has super dry hands, these are the two products I used. And I was using these for about six days. And I wore these really ugly ratty gloves from Walmart because they were cheap. And I just like soaked and drenched them every night and anytime I lie down in a nap in that lotion. And it's really helped with the cracked blisters. I mean, they're still healing, but I mean, they look pretty good. And I haven't used the lotion in days and my hands are still super soft just from like five or six days of using those products. So I was glad that the new neighbor sent those over. Um, if you guys have a few more questions, I'll take a few more questions. Um, you can ask me anything and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but everybody is doing well over here. We're just doing well. So um, trying to think if there's anything else I was going to share with you guys till questions start coming in but yeah we're doing good the kids are with their dad this week so i am going to go on a second date with my friend we're going to meet up in salt lake city um and see what fun things are to do um i missed that one i missed that question is Shaden going to go on a mission? So I already covered that one, Vicky. We'll have to see. It's his choice and I will respect whatever he decides. Glad you were feeling better. Yes, this cold, I came down with it last week and I actually kicked it, I wanna say in a couple days, but my body was so tired after because I was just go, 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 taking care of the kids and forgetting to take care of myself. Ooh, do you have snow? Great question. We had snow last week. Um, and it only stayed for like a day. What is your next project in the house? I'm still working on my laundry room, but it's slow since money's tighter, like everything is slower and I'm trying to pay cash as I go. Um, so I have a handyman working, he's plumbing two washer dryer units and I'm really grateful for that because it means I won't be in the back room away from my kids um, doing laundry as much. I can be out with the kids and not spending all day doing the laundry, I can just do it a lot quicker. And so for me, that's really the first place I started was um, the laundry room because I am in there so much. What do you make for meals with so many different tastes? Uh, that's a great question. I think the more important question is, what do I make with all the food allergies? Because three of the quintuplets are allergic to so many things. So I find variations that are oftentimes egg-free like French toast, I'm able to make it two ways and I'm I'm able to make it like rather quickly. I did found, find like a chicken recipe that's like a breaded chicken. So it's just like a big chicken nugget in the kids' minds that's like panko based. Um, I also found a great banana bread recipe um, that you guys can head to my Instagram, jamie.scott, if you want some recipe recommendations that are like um, egg free or things that my kids are liking. I came down with strep throat, I'm sorry. Um, I, those comments came in really fast. I couldn't read them. Please be careful driving to Salt Lake City in the winter conditions. How far, I will, how far do you live from Skylar's? Skylar's place is about 20 minutes from here. And we tried picking, well, he picked where he wanted to live. But um, <clears throat> we, since I'm the custodial parent, that only just means like the kids go to school where I live. So he tried to pick a place that was a little closer to the school, but he picked a place that um, it's really beautiful. So if you haven't watched his vlogs, you can, but he lives kind of overlooking a lake and it's really scenic. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it doesn't take too long to get to each house for pickup drop off. Um, any more questions before I... 
go. It's so fun just seeing you guys like, and I don't have to do editing. Does Landon still play soccer? Great, great question. He wants to start playing soccer again, but since he's not been on a team, a lot of the teams down here are really competitive. So he wants a less competitive if he gets back into soccer. Um, so I think Lannon's dad was trying to find a team that would be a good fit for him. Um, and then let's see. He, Lannon's still playing guitar. So he does guitar early mornings at 645 and it's like killing him. He's like, if there's a way we could change it to afternoon, that would be great. But Lannon is such a like sensitive kid that he, like he won't even play the guitar for me. Um, let's see, we have a few more questions coming in. I'll see if I can like look at the comments before I look away. Have a great week on all your new adventures. Thank you, I'm excited. So I'm gonna go meet up with a girlfriend and I haven't seen her in five years, but we were best friends in high school and she is just an amazing person. Um, do the children, I missed it, I missed that question. You can ask her, ask it again. So proud to see you getting through, oh, they're coming too fast. Does Landon plan on going to seminary? Yes, he is still active in the Mormon faith and he loves it. And I'm very respectful of his path and what he wants. How far are you from Salt Lake? I am about four and a half hours from Salt Lake. So I will take my time getting up there. If I ever need to stop and pull over because the weather gets a little dicey, I will do that. Um, watching and listening to you and your family. Um, I'm just trying to read the comments as fast as I can. You look so much happier. Thank you. I think it's nice to take breaks and take time to reflect and do self-care and make these friendships and rekindle old friendships. So it's been nice to have these pockets of time where I can do that. Totally rocking it. Well, that was nice to say. That was very nice to say. Do the children have to be Mormons? No, I think religion is a choice. And in my faith and in my religion and my belief system, I believe number one in agency and respecting how a child thinks and feels, but I do want to instruct them with good morals, ethics, values, how to serve within the home and each other and outside the home because I think this world needs good human beings. And I think you can find that across various faiths and religions of people. And I think this world just needs good people collectively that are teaching good morals, values, and principles to their kids. So um, I do. I would hope that they would continue with this lifestyle and faith, but I also respect if they choose to um, practice a different faith religion, um, but I will do everything I can to teach them of the things that I love about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So um, you're doing a good job, my dear. Well, Jane, that was really nice to say. I think as mothers, we learn along the way and we make mistakes, but what I teach my kids is mistakes are how we learn, or as Lincoln would say, mistakes is how we learn. So um, anyway, I'm just so grateful that you guys have championed our family all this time, even though it's been messy at times and you still are very loving and I'm just grateful for good people. You're just amazing. Well, Caroline, right back at you. Hope your date went well. It did. I'm I'm excited for a second. I'm excited for a second date. I think it'll be fun. Thanks for sharing um, so many great people, so many great people. But I think, you know, we choose what we tend to focus on, we tend to create. And I know I've talked about this, you know, January can be the month that people really struggle with depression. So I think there's good people everywhere. And if we choose to focus on the negativity in the world of social media, we are going to find it. But if we choose to look for the good people and choose to look for the good, we will find it. And so I hope that's something that we can find and look for in others around us in our own community, but also people online and not paying attention to the negativity and the bullies because there are trolls on here and I can't always like block people and pick it all out like I would be doing it all day but you're so brave to share so much thank you is your date divorced good question he has never been married and he doesn't have kids so that's different how did you decide which girl was going to be named Lily um that's a great question I had a bunch of cool like sacred experiences if you will which maybe I'll save for the next next live video where I felt like I knew each of my kids before they were ever born. And Lily in particular, and through ultrasound every single day that I had in that hospital for nine and a half weeks, that's a lot of ultrasounds. I really got to know the kids well. 
Lily um, in the womb was very like dainty and she would point her toes a lot in ultrasounds and was, I mean, if you could use the word like very feminine, just very like babyish. And so I had kind of envisioned what she was probably going to look like before she was born. And so when the kids were all born, that was very important to me that all the babies were named um, correctly of where they were in the womb and how I had thought they might look. And so um, when the babies were first born, Violet and Lily were actually mixed up because it was a really fast emergency C-section. And so they actually were swapped. And so I can't remember if it was like baby A and baby D or whatever, but they were swapped. And so since I wasn't able to see um, the kids the first like few days, because that was a massive surgery for me, um, Skylar, their dad had to go in and I was adamant. I was like, you have to get it right. Like I could barely, you know, come to, and I was like, you have to get those two right. And, um, somebody asked a question. I'll answer that one in just a second. And so it was Skylar that was able to tell apart which girl was going to be named Lily and which one was going to be named Violet. And it was interesting because one looked like me and one looked more like dad. And so I was just glad that we got him right because he got it right on. So somebody asked, where did you go on your date? We went to Red Fort in Southern Utah. Um, it's an Indian place and I love it. And I was so excited. I got my favorite thing, strawberry lassi. It's like a yogurt, strawberry drink and then chicken masala. But I was so sick. Maybe this is TMI. So sick to my stomach trying to detox that cold I like barely ate anything and I was like just so you know this is my favorite thing to eat ever and he picked the restaurant he didn't know and I was like but I don't want to be stuck in the bathroom the whole time so I'm just gonna take this to go and eat it later so I finally actually was talking to him last night on the phone facetiming and I ate the rest of my dinner a few days later so um but anyway so I am just glad you guys are here you guys ask really good questions and I'm just getting grateful for your love and support and the kindness you've shown to me and to my family. And I just hope for more kindness into 2024. That's it. I hope to, I hope to do like Facebook lives every week. I'm going to try and do them as frequently as I can consistently, but every once in a while, like I'll just have a week where I'm just like floored because the kids are sick or I'm sick or we're just navigating a lot. So anyway, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this live. Hope you got a little bit more information and a little more insight into some things. But yes, I am going because I'm really happy and I probably should have gone to bed earlier instead of chit-chatting with a new friend. But anyway, conversation was great. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your day and I will have a new video out tomorrow. If you're not following me on Instagram, I would love it. It is jamie.scott and YouTube is Jamie Scott with a dash mark. It's a little tricky to find, but if you search for it, you'll find it. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.